Let's talk about branch protection. And what do I mean by that? Have you ever had a repo where you want maintainers on there, but you try and say to them, well, let's get multiple reviews or let's make sure the GitHub actions or the CI passes. Let's make sure this is okay and this is done and this is done. And it's quite hard to keep on top of everything. For everyone to remember it, you could do a checklist in the pull request template. But again, it's not that great. What if you could in GitHub set the requirements in the configuration under settings. So let me show you. So here we have settings in a repo that I've just picked as an example. And down the left, I've picked branches. And you can actually do this for a specific branch like, like main or develop or whatever you want. But you can also do it for all your feature branches with a wildcard as well. So remember that you can do bug branches and feature branches a little bit differently. So you can have multiple rules per repo. And after you've done that, you get presented various options. So I think it's really important. Let me show you what I think I would use and let me know in the comments below what you would use, what you think is, is good or not. So require a pull request before merging. I think that's pretty important. I think that's good. It shows that you make a commit into a branch that's not protected like feature hyphen or bug fix hyphen. And then for it to get into the main branch. So for example, here we would have main it requires a pull request, so therefore we would give that a tick. And if you tick that, it also then gives you some more options and how many approvals are required. We sometimes put two on some of our repos, but then also sometimes if there's a really simple fix, then you don't want to distract two people. So sometimes we, we have one. It's that just finding that balance. So you might want to, but sometimes putting two like I said, it gives a restriction for, okay, that's a typo fix. Let's just get that merged by, you know, one person reviews it, get it merged in. It's not a massive change. Definitely adds value. So I'm not saying don't do those pull requests, definitely do them. But you want to make sure that the ones that are, you know, bigger pull requests, say, for example, have two or three people review it from different perspectives. One might be focusing on documentation, one might be focusing on testing, but well, they might all be developers, but they've just got different, you know, areas of interest. One might be interested in accessibility. So it's really important to check that. And this is a really, really important one. When a new commit is added to that pull request, the approval should be dismissed. This is so important. But I've seen pull requests that don't have this checked and uh, they get a PR approved. People then add more commits to their pull request by doing commits to the same branch and then they merge it. But those extra commits weren't reviewed. So this is like super, super important. I cannot recommend this enough. Give that a tick. I don't do the next one so much. That's fine for me. So I'll leave that unticked. The next thing I do is make sure that the GitHub action checks pass before merging. Like if they're failing, then why are we merging this? And people say, oh, we'll fix that later. No, 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 it needs to be fixed now. So I think that's really important. Make sure you, you have that all the status checks are you know passing successfully. I do like having branches kept up to date. So what that means is if you're making changes to your branch, but then the, the branch you're merging into, for example, main is racing ahead, other pull requests getting merged. It's important to, to get the changes from main into your pull request before merging into the main branch. I think that's really, really important. I do like that. And also this one's quite interesting. So as we all know, and if you don't, pull request, you can have comments, you know, inline discussions, all those sorts of great things, great collaboration, great way to learn, knowledge transfer, awesome stuff. I highly recommend getting involved in that. But I think it's important to have those conversations resolved. And if something's pending, then I think it needs to be resolved. It might say, hey, let's create a new issue. We'll do that another pull request. But that's resolved, right? There is a conclusion to that inline comment. So I think this is important. Although some people do say that it can be a bit blocking if someone puts a, a comment in there, maybe it's not relevant, but then I think you just leave a comment and mark it as resolved. So they can mark it as resolved and we can move forward. So I still think that's really important. I love this one, but unfortunately it's very hard to use in open source projects. Require signed commit. And what that means is it, you're verifying the commits are from you. So you have to set up various keys to do this. So you sign each time you do a, a git commit. However, most people don't do this. So by enabling that makes it really tricky and kind of prevents a very high barrier to entry for people to contribute to your project. So unfortunately, most of the time this is not ticked. Require linear history. I do like linear history, but I know some people like to get, you know, fancy with their commit history. So this one is up to up to debate, I think. Let me know what you think about this. I'd be interested to know. Require deployments to succeed before merging. 
It depends. Is your branch getting deployed out somewhere? I worked on one project where every branch, feature, bug request, whatever it was, got deployed to a production-like environment. It literally built this entire environment, databases, load balancers, uh, firewalls, everything, and you could test it for real. With tools like Gitpod, uh, makes it a lot easier. It puts um, a badge in the pull request. You can click it, you can go test it out, and you can run the Docker containers, all that great stuff. It might not be as close to production as you want, but it's probably good enough. You don't have to stash any of your changes locally or, or clone the project again to try and test out that um, pull request and create patches and all that crazy stuff. So it's quite good that you can test it out before merging because it's not just about reviewing it, it's also about testing it. But to be honest, I don't think this one needs to be ticked, so we'll leave that one off. Include administrators. Yes, 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 yes. I think administrators, so basically the maintainers cannot bypass any of these rules, although sometimes we do and it's very rare, but it shouldn't be the norm. So I think it's really important to enforce this. I love it that these are now off by default. They never used to be. You have to um, turn them off. But no force pushes to this branch. Remember, this, all these checkboxes are not for the entire repo, are for the branch we're mentioning up here for main. And like I said, you can do a wildcard uh, if you need to as well. So you can you know, cover multiple branches. You don't need a rule for each branch. Um, you can cover, like I said, loads of branches. So allow force pushes. If you're working in your own branch by yourself, then force push. Do what you want, rewrite history, don't care. But as soon as you're collaborating with someone in a branch, you shouldn't rewrite history. It is gonna cause weird conflicts for all of you. I think that's really important. And then allow deletions. Yes, we delete feature branches, bug fix branches. Once they're merged, we delete them. So we keep our branches to a low number. We keep our releases high as we're climbing all the time. But I hope that's interesting to you and you can just hit create. So if I just create that, Oh, I need to enter my password. Password one, two, three. Just kidding. It's not really. Um, okay, name already protected. So I was creating it for the main branch, but it's already got one on there already as well. So you can see this is already protected and you can see what I have chosen for this as well. So I could do another one for another branch though, if I, if I wished, just not the same name. So that, that makes sense. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I share lots of content on open source, GitHub, getting you into web dev so you can do whatever you want. Digital nomad like me, travel the world, freelancing, permanent job. I just want you to be happy and I want you to get the job and money that you deserve. I look forward to chatting to you in Discord. Link in the description below. We chat in Discord between live streams and videos and have community calls and pairing and all that great stuff. I'll see you there.